you love a Bible study? Because the Bible loves to study you. In Psalm 125, the Bible says in verse 1, those who trust in the Lord. Are there any un who trust in God today? The Bible says those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which can never. Y'all don't want to hear the word of God. Which can never be shaken. Do you want to have an unshakable relationship with the king eternal? He says you've got to trust God. you got to trust God in your finances. you got to trust God in your relationships. you got to trust God at your jobs. You've got to trust in the Lord in everything that you do. He says, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. And the North Super Region said, Amen. you may be seated. Amen. What a passage. The title of the lesson is overtaken and never shaken. Turn your holy scriptures to the book of Genesis. I really hope you love a Bible study. I, I had a lot we were going to study, but we don't have enough time. Come on, Daddy. In Genesis 37, we'll begin in verse 2. Joseph, a young man, 17 years old, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Billah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report. Verse 4. His father, his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than any of them. They hated Joseph and could not speak a kind word to Joseph. Joseph has dreams. And his brother said this after hearing the dream. In verse 8, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. In verse 10, his father hears of the dream. And he says, it says his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you have? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous, but his father kept this matter in his mind. So Jacob sends his brother, his son Joseph, to be with his brothers. And this happens in verse 18. The Bible says, they saw Joseph in a distance. And before Joseph reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into the furnace. I mean, the one of the, these cisterns and say that a furious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. Then in verse 26, Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay a hand on him. After all, he is our brother, your own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. In verse 34, Jacob finds out that Joseph was supposedly dead. Jacob tears his clothes and begins to mourn. Verse 36, the Midianites sell Joseph in Egypt 
to Potiphar. Turn with me to chapter 39. Come on. Come on, Danny. Now, Joseph had been down in Egypt. Potiphar was the Egyptian who ruled him, who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. They brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. Notice who was with Joseph while he was alone, while his brothers betrayed him, while they tried to kill him, while one brother spoke up for him and the rest didn't. Notice who was with Joseph. Verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. So we got to change the title. Oh. I hope you love a Bible study. Yeah. Okay. When the Lord is with you, you can never be shaken. Amen. Point number one. When the Lord is with you, you will face difficulty but will make history. We see that Joseph was a dreamer, a man who didn't necessarily put the dreams in his own mind, but God put the dreams in his mind. And as a dreamer, he just shared the dreams with mom, shared the dreams with dad, shared the dreams with his brothers, but his brothers became more and more more jealous. As they were jealous and envious of Joseph, they came together to literally kill him. But nevertheless, the Lord was with him. Which leads us to our second point. We got eight today. There's just not enough time to go into all of it. The second point is you're, when God is with you, your relationships alter, but nevertheless, you prosper. Nice. Can God get an amen? amen? We see here the prosperation of Joseph. It says the Lord was with him, and he prospered. Amen. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything Joseph did. Y'all don't want to hear the word of God. Oh, oh, reach, Danny. Reach. Come on. I'm, I'm just not convinced. Come on, Danny. Reach the word. I don't know if you want the Lord to be with you. You'd rather have a girl with you. You'd rather have a husband with you. You'd rather have your wallet with money in it with you. You'd rather have your parents with you. Do you want to have a model with you? Would you rather have drugs with you? Would you rather have a bottle of alcohol with you? Well, then I ask again, do you want the Lord with you? Well, Joseph prospered. Come on, man. Point number three. When the Lord is with you, your enemies revere you. Wow. Wow, that's a great Egypt did not like Israelites. Yeah. Spoiler alert. In fact, they didn't associate with them. They didn't eat together. They didn't spend time together. This was a very, very, very rare situation. That an Israelite man, a, a true Jew, would live in Egypt and be in charge, be in leadership, be responsible, 
and be favorably disposed. Wow. This is what happens when the Lord is with you. Potiphar saw that God was with him. What an indicator of your relationship with God. That when you're near the Lord, those who aren't even close to God see it in you. They respect it about you. Do they know that in your classroom? Do they know you are a man of God at your school? Do they know that at your job? Do they know that in your family? Do they know that the Lord is with you wherever you go? Come on, Danny. So what did Potiphar do? In verse 4, Joseph found favor in Potiphar's eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household. Amen. What a moment. What's in a household? A family. Imagine you put a stranger in charge of your family. What does it tell you about Potiphar? He knew he didn't know the Lord. But he wanted a man who knew the Lord to lead his family family. See, there are many people that may be even here in this room that you just don't know Jesus. But you need somebody who knows Jesus to lead you, to lead your family, to lead your friends all the way to Jesus so the Lord can be with you. He entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything that Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So he left in Joseph's care everything he had with Joseph in charge. He did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Point number four. When the Lord is with you, success follows you. Remember, ask yourself, is the Lord with me today? What moment here. That the Lord is just blessing others because of Joseph. Just because you went to hang out with me, you got blessed that day. Just because you spent time and I said, hey, you got blessed that day. Just because you're in the classroom, the classroom is blessed as long as you're there. Just because you work at your job, your job is blessed because you are there. That's what it means to have the Lord with you. Come on. Come on, break that. Point number five. What is it? Come on, Daddy. When the Lord is with you, leadership becomes you. The enemies of God is, I got to put him in charge. God is blessing everything. He can't just be sitting around. He can't just be hanging over here. He can't just be isolated. He can't just be on his own playing video games. He can't just be on his home watching porn. No, this is a special man. This is a man of God. This man is chosen. I got to put him in charge. What an attitude. Family, we were called to be leaders. This is what we do. This is who we are. This is who God is using you to be. To lead who? To lead your neighborhood. To lead your friend group. To lead your family. To lead God's people. This is what we do. Because the Lord is with you. Point number six. Come on, man. There's a lot I could share, but we, we don't even have enough time. Should I stop? I'm glad. I'm, there's a 
pocket are fired up, the back is just not fired up. I think I'm going to sit down. Do y'all really want the Lord with you? I don't believe it in the back. Does the back want Jesus with them? Amen. Hopefully you'll be in the front next week. Point number six. When the Lord is with you, his presence unwraps presence. But y'all wanted me to stop, so I'm just going. Everything was blessed because Joseph knew the Lord. Now, the Bible does say this about Joseph. Joseph was handsome and well-built. Verse 7. I'll let you come up with your own image of that. But let's be pure. After a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph. Oops. And said, come to bed with me. Big yikes. Number seven. When the Lord is with you, the devil tempts you. Why would he do such a thing? I mean, I got everything good. He don't want you to have anything good. He doesn't want you to know the Lord. He doesn't want you to be blessed. He doesn't want you to be faithful. He doesn't want you to be loving. He doesn't want you to be kind. He is the very enemy of God's people. There's a lot of scriptures I could reference. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came so that we would have life and have it to the full. We got to understand who our enemy is. The Bible says in James 5 verse 7 that we must resist the devil. And what does he do? He flees from you. So what did Joseph do? In verse 8, he refused. He said, with me in charge, my master does not concern himself with anything in his house. Everything he owns is mine. No one is greater in this house than me. My master has withheld nothing except you because you are his wife how then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God many of us need to repent and be Joseph this is why we're reading this today what a moment here the Bible says in verse 10 And through, and though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even just simply be with her. What an attitude. What a a message. Bible says one day. You know this is bad. He went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household service was inside. She caught him by his cloak. Says, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. And the North Super Region said, point number eight. When the Lord is with you, you have the power, even in the midnight hour. There was no one else there. It was just him and her. No one needed to know, right? No one would have found out. It's just one time. See, the devil can be seen as an acronym. The D, 
discussing doubts. Mm -hmm. Too often you discuss doubts in your own minds. Mm -hmm. The E. Too often we entertain evil in our hearts. The V. We violate God and his conscience. What an attitude that Joseph had. He didn't say, how could I sin against my master? He didn't say, how could I sin against myself? He said, how could I sin against God? The I. We imitate evil way too often. And the L, we embark on a lustful pursuit of lies. It's time to resist the devil. As a descendant of Joseph said, His name is Joshua. And Joshua said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Can God get an amen? Amen. What I mean is this. There will be zero toleration in God's church for sinning against God in these ways. Amen. Amen. We just can't do it. We must keep, if we're married, our marriage bed pure, as it says in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Keep the marriage bed pure. If we're single, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 3, the Bible tells us there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity. This must be the standard that God's house is built on for God's kingdom to be preached, for the world to hear the gospel, and for the Lord to be with you. It's time to R E P E N T. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, you can write it down, but I can quote it. There is no temptation that has overtaken you. God is faithful. He would not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out. Family, you've got to be an expert on just getting out. Satan has traps. The Bible says in, a, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, in verse 25 to 26, opponents must be gently instructed yeah. in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, mm-hmm. and that they would come to their senses yeah. and escape yeah. the trap of the devil yeah. who has taken them to do his will. There is an escape that's necessary to be in the presence of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, in verse 10, these are all memory verses. Come on, come on. That I hope that you take the challenge that you read and you memorize these verses. Memorize 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25 to 26. Study 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 through 5. Not everybody's taking notes. Uh, And really make this your ambition. That you're going to escape from the devil's schemes. So we can R-E-P-E-N-T. Amen? Amen. And then let's understand what repentance is in 2 Corinthians 7, 10 to 11. I challenge you to read all of those passages and memorize them all. Yeah, come on. 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 through 11, the Bible, the Bible says godly sorrow brings repentance, leading him to a knowledge of the truth, and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you. What earnestness. What eagerness. To see justice done. What indignation. What alarm. What longing. What concern. What readiness. What readiness. Come on. Amen. Amen. To clear yourselves. See, at every point, you, the North Super Region, have proven yourselves to be innocent in this matter. Let's learn from Joseph. And let's run. Run to the Father. Be in the presence of God and have his favor, not just on you, but on everyone around you. That when the Lord is with you, you will face difficulty, but you will make history. Amen. Joseph goes to being in leadership of all of Egypt and Egypt's territory expands under his leadership. His own brothers come and they literally bow down to him. His father comes and literally bows down to him. God took the Israelites who were hated by the Egyptians to be the leader of the Egyptians. When the Lord is with you, your relationships alter, but nevertheless, you prosper. When the Lord is with you, your enemies revere you. When the Lord is with you, success follows you. When the Lord is with you, leadership becomes you. When the Lord is with you, his presence unwraps presence. When the Lord is with you, the devil may tempt you. And lastly, when the Lord is with you, you have the power. Even in yeah. the midnight hour. I love you guys, and to God be all the glory. Yeah.